All right. Welcome to the Price Ball Channel. Today we are talking breakout brand of the year 2020. I'm joined today, my name is Ben Kane, by the way, uh, joined by Mike Roberto, CEO of Price Ball, and Heather Jacques, our digital content manager. 2020 has been a wild year. It was a horrible year to launch a brand. It was a horrible year to try to even start your momentum. And yet somehow we saw some brands really doing some incredible jobs. So uh, let's talk about the nominees today. Sorry, they're not alphabet alphabetized yet, Mike, but if you want to run through them and we can talk a little bit about what we heard from these different brands, what we loved about them, and uh, we'll give you our winner. All right, yes, I will go through them. Do I have to alphabetize it? I'm going to mess up. All right, so the first is Dragon Pharma. Second would be Glaxod. <laughs> <laughs> Third would be Hostile. And then the fourth would be Raw Nutrition and then you also have Revive MD there, and Raw and Revive are both owned by the same folks too. So we gotta mention that. And um, and just for those of you seeing are uh, watching this on YouTube or Instagram, we do have a uh, previous videos where we covered the industry in general in 2020, as well as we just covered brand of the year. So you can go and check out those videos as well. This is breakout brand of the year. So not a rookie, but not necessarily, uh, or it could be a rookie, I guess, but not necessarily uh, someone who's super well-established, someone who really broke the mold this year. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of funny. In, in 2017, I do want to say, like Nutribio won breakout brand of the year for bodybuilding.com. That was a bit of an upset because they've been around since 1996. So we do want to make sure that we establish that this could be a brand that had been around for years and just reinvented themselves or brought themselves to the public better. Uh, although this year, Pretty much every one of these brands is, is, is a rookie in some uh, sort, whether they were launched this year or within the last five years. We have some pretty new brands here, um, but each one of these had a pretty explosive year. Um, they utilize their content or leverage their influences in different ways. Uh, but actually all of these are mostly digital first brands, which is pretty exciting to see uh, in 2020. I guess it's kind of stereotypical for 2020, but also makes sense with the year that we had that there wasn't as much in-person meeting. So we see a lot of direct consumer brands here. So I think probably the, I think if we want to work backwards from who people probably wouldn't be surprised, they'd be surprised that we were talking about these, uh, Dragon Pharma is a brand that we don't have a business affiliate relationship with. Although we are close with Drew Peters, their chief science officer, director of scientific affairs, I think is his exact title. Uh, something that we were super excited about is uh, seeing the stuff that uh, Drew brought to the table there. Drew, obviously an industry veteran from things like GAT, ProSups, uh, anywhere that David Sandler you see is uh, somewhere where he follows around. And um, seeing him on his own at Dragon Farm was really awesome because he brought some new flavors, some new fun formulas. He brought some Alpinia Galanga. Uh, and we were excited to see what he did there. Uh, what did you guys think with the Dragon Farm launches? Of they this sponsor year? Mr. O. You got to give them props for oh, yeah. <laughs> bringing it home. <laughs> I think uh, one thing I really appreciate about Drew and what he's doing with Dragon Pharma is that he's just sick. You can just tell, by the way, Drew talks on podcasts or does interviews. He's just sick of seeing the same thing over and over again. Um, so you got to give him credit for starting to bring, like, who, like, uh, Mr. Baines doesn't have citrulline in it, right? It has nitrosogen in it. Like, he's just ready to bring something new to the table. And I've also liked to see him take that brand and really just make it um, not only based on, like, new products, but, like, educating people. He does a lot of education on his own platform. does a lot of education on other platforms, such as for Nutrition 21, on new ingredients. Um, brought out the health line. I think it was called Daily RX. And it was like stress, joint supplement, digestion, like all those really cool products that will help, you know, elite athletes like Big Ramy um, stay healthy and whatnot. But um, I really appreciate it. And his unique flavors. Like I just tried the um, white chocolate peanut butter iso farm. And that was one of the best uh, tasting isolates I've had in a long time. I think he's doing some cool stuff. Uh, um, and I think he's just kind of getting started. He's kind of taking Dragon Farm and kind of went through a rebrand. If you guys see the labels um, and whatnot, you know, the formulas, I think he's doing some really cool stuff and I appreciate how he's doing things differently, um, but still staying like, you know, oh, this is still a effective product. And I think it takes some more education though, because I think some consumers will look at his products and be like, well, what does this do? What does this do? What's this new ingredient? Why don't you have citrulline in your pre-workout? Stuff like that. Um, but I think he's doing really cool stuff and I'm excited, really excited to see what he's going to do for uh, 21. So um, but his products really impressed me. I've taken multiple of his products and uh, I've, I've really enjoyed them. Yeah, Mike, I don't know how many of the launches from Drew, Drew you got this year. I think you were mostly watching me and Heather talking about Yeah, it. I know less than average, I'll say. So I'm not going <laughs> to say a lot, but 
Um, no, I, I just mentioned my piece. I, I like any, I like when a brand can sponsor Mr. O. So with, uh, you know, I've been talking about Sean Clarita and Nutribio all year long and called that one. And uh, <laughs> no, so yeah, so I got to do the same for, for Dragon Pharma as well. I, um, I only know a little, I, I've tried nothing, so I'm not going to yeah. say much, but yeah, I, I was very happy with the, with the Mr. Vane's formula. Like, and I told Heather when, when coming to price fall, like you're going to be writing what the same pre-workout over and over and over 3.2 grams of beta alanine, six grams of citrulline, blah, 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 blah. Like, I love it when a formulator bucks the grain a little bit. Not that I hate citrulline. It's just that um, I could find that supplement on the shelves anywhere on the planet at this point, give me something different. And Drew can do that. And that's, what's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've always given it to Drew there, you know, as much as I am from my own modern Nutribio, all about the clinical dosages, I have to give it to a guy who can make a product that is going to be in distribution and needs to meet certain margins, yet still delivering on effect. You know, we, we, I talked about how Drew, Drew is a disciple or a, uh, his mentor is Dave Sandler, who made some incredible stuff at ProSups and, and probably some of your favorite products of time have been from him. He had to make products and he's trained Drew on making products that deliver yet can make their way into distribution and not be totally unprofitable. So something that Drew does really well is maximize the effects through synergy and effective new ingredients. He's also been a proponent of some of our good friends over at NNB, bringing some really cool stuff there. Um, and his, his love for Alpinia Galanga, which is really cool. I, I really do appreciate the things that he does with his formulas. I think that 2020, uh, uh, it was a really awesome warm up year for him. I loved what he did with his health line, but I think going into 2021, we're going to see some really cool stuff from Drew and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I know he has a lot in the works in terms of like, even just on the protein side, like coming out with a vegan protein, maybe introducing some new ingredients in that, you know, just really expanding their line and really building the Dragon Pharma brand. And I just appreciate a formulator who's outspoken and who's not afraid to be like, you know, yeah. ask me about my formula kind of thing. And it's like, well, I can back it up with science. Like, I just really like how Drew, he's just very uh, aggressive at times, but it's kind of welcoming. So. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about someone who's outspoken and aggressive. I had to cut a few minutes from the SERS podcast with Drew when it went to our YouTube channel. That was one so. of my favorite podcasts. <laughs> right, so let's remember we were talking about breakout brand of the year, not formulator of the year. So yes. We can make a separate video on that. Well, I think yeah. that's probably a good point here. That's probably one of the reasons that they didn't get slotted for breakout brand of the year. What, what we're talking all about Drew and his formulas, but what is the criteria for breakout brand for the year? For me, it's, well, it would have been every expo I go to who gets talked about the most. Right now, it's been our Q&As, our messages, our behind the scenes talking with other brands. Who is everyone talking about the most? Dragon Pharma definitely had some decent buzz. But were they really the breakout brand of the year? I don't know how much their real, real buzz there was there for them. Um, and so for that reason, I want to give them definitely a, a top ranking here, some sort of like an honorable mention, respected everything that they did. I think 2021 probably will be the time to shine. So uh, from there, I want to move in. I really want to talk about hostile because you want to talk, we talked about earlier uh, in our 2020 recap, brands that utilize and leverage their content, especially podcasts extremely well. Fuad is someone that I know Heather and I extremely look up to. He's a businessman. He's a, is a very smart, educated person in terms of nutrition and supplementation. He's a, a well-accomplished uh, bodybuilder. And this year, he laid into content and just like almost no one else in his niche of the industry did. With his bodybuilding and bollocks and, and real bodybuilding and all, all those different podcasts, he reached out to people in a way that no other bodybuilder, in my opinion, really did. He leveraged that content in a way that blew up hostile. Um, they launched in, I think, March of this year. Um, I did have the pleasure of helping them with their beta samples last year, uh, which was pretty cool because their manufacturers in America, we were able to get uh, some samples straight from them and help them out with some feedback there. It took them a little bit longer to launch. They had a couple setbacks, but when they finally launched, we had messages left and right. And I think if we had chosen pre-workout of the year in the middle of the year, I would have gone with hostility. <laughs> and this has been a topic a little bit like at what point of the year where we would have given it to. <laughs> hostility is one of my favorite pre-workouts. If for nothing else, they added nitrates and removed beta alanine from your traditional pre-workout and pumped all the dosages. And I loved the way they went against the grain with removing beta alanine, but also using a nitrate. They, I mean, these guys have some freaking like monster formulas. And I have to give them respect for that because they also, 
operate on a pretty large scale in terms of distribution uh, direct to consumer. It's not a cheap product, but they do it. So I know that Heather's been a big fan and Mike, uh, I think in terms of just the hostility, you were a big fan too. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I go back and forth with the Pico too, but when I'm not in the mood for beta alanine, that's definitely a supplement you pick up. And yeah. so we, I always talk about like, yeah, ghost, ghost is doing it right and everything, but how do you launch a brand right now? And people love podcasts. This isn't, it's not rocket science. It's hard work, but it's not rocket science. And um, Fuad is, this is, that is the blueprint. Like that is how you launch a, uh, you know, this is how you launch a brand in 2020 and he knocked it out of the park with it. So total breakout, very, very, uh, very excited and happy for him. And, and not, I know that not everyone, I said, this is how you do it. Like not everyone can be full you know, but that's, that's the blueprint right there. And I think other people will be copying that and that, um, that's going to position him very, very well for the future and excited to, to see more from them. And yeah, the formulas are bombastic. For sure. Awesome. Yeah. So last one here we got to move into is, well, I should know we have two more. Well, we can, we can, we can put two, two of these here together, raw and revive. We can put together as sister brands, both owned by Matt Jansen and Dom I of Gavone. Um, raw launched this year, revive launched last year. Both of them had incredible responses this year with growth. Probably some of that due to Nick Mocker's incredible uh, showings in uh, the NBC this year, becoming a pro, but also their content, their utilization of their, their athletes like Hafthor Bjornsson and Chris Bumstead for Revive. In so many different ways, they grew. They had their BSEG certification. Um, and a lot of people were talking about them, whether it was negative or good with their manufacturing, which we had to establish at one point. There were so many different things that people were talking about with these guys. And it was an absolute pleasure to see them growing. What were your guys' thoughts on their growth this year? I mean, I think it was a very smart idea for Revive to create, or Matt and Dom, to create just a different brand and say, hey, this is our sports nutrition brand versus trying to spin Revive as like, hey, we're just going to do a sports nutrition line under Revive and just call it as it is. Like, I, I like how they kept them separate. And I think they did a great job with their formulas um, right off the bat. I really like Raw Pump, one of my favorite uh, non um pump products of the year. And uh, like you said, I like how they just, it, those two brands just, they did phenomenal, both of them, but like they're very, they are in this like one direction and they're just like focused on what they're focused on. But um, I think it was a smart move. Awesome. Well, the last one here to talk about is the one that everyone is kind of, uh, I mean, I think they're expecting us to talk about. Uh, Glaxon. Uh, when we talk about, <laughs> oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. I just said, well, they broke out. Like, it's, oh, I'm sorry. So you thought you said I broke it's up. It's self explanatory. You talk about breakout brand of the year. Who, who like broke out of the gates and just destroyed it all? And that's Glaxon. It really, yeah. um, as much as I love, like, Revive and Raw, just to, to go back and talk about that, like, it almost seemed like Revive broke out last year and Raw maybe could be like a rookie of the year contender. Um, <laughs> all in one like who who just stormed out of the gate and like you know just rode out into the field and slaughtered everything and it, to me it's klaxon like mm -hmm. they they're just flying and yeah. um i i just on, on on every single thing they're doing it's something new it's something fun it's something charged and you see the questions they're they're the ones that are getting a lot of you know a lot of people are asking questions about it and they and rightfully so because there's new stuff happening so um, we love we love fielding the questions on all the stuff that they're doing. And like I said in earlier podcasts, like they have supplements that I'm recommending to people that um, aren't normally going to be taking sports nutrition. It just seems like you called it that they would be the brand to watch and they were and they they broke out and it, honestly beyond my expectations. I know that retailers are just loving it and, um, and it's a year where retailers needed something to love. Yeah, I think that uh, it's, it's exciting because they wanted to, uh, in the same way that Ghost was saying the same thing, they wanted to transcend sports nutrition. And I think there were a lot of parallels between them and Ghost, and that was where a lot of controversy came in. And at the end of the day, we saw that they were clearly two tangential projects that went in different directions. We were happy about that. Ghost, uh, Glaxon did some things here where they challenged the status quo, proprietary blends, uh, they, they had things that didn't quite add up. When, remember when Specimen first came out, everyone's like, this is bullshit. It doesn't, it's not strong. It doesn't have uh, clinical dosages. There's no way that this should feel good at all. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just try it, dude. And I want to remind everyone that when they first came out, they didn't even want to do a pre-workout. 
This was like rudimentary to them. They got forced into making a pre-workout. Joey sat down and like in less than a day, put together pre-workout, launched it. And this pre-workout has challenged the masses in terms of what they're expecting, what they like in formulas. And it actually even coined the yo-yo blend, which <laughs> now we see other brands using, which is really exciting. Uh, yeah, and they've stumbled on some stuff that, you know, we've seen Alpha Yohimbi go back and forth, and it always seemed like it was a very inconsistent ingredient. I think they figured that out. And yes. I'm a more of a Yohimbi and HCL fan. And, um, but yeah, the yo-yo blend, I can't full scoop it, <laughs> but I, I love what they did. And they, I, they figured out the, the issue with Alpha Yohimbi, and is all I'm going to say. So that, that product is very, uh, very unique. And I've said this for years and years, like, we can go back four years. I like choline blends and they have an incredible choline blend as well. So yeah. just like those are the, some of the small things, but all these small things that go into their supplements turn into very big things. And that's why they broke out. People want to have something different and here it is. You talk about the check boxes across the whole board. You've got, they're vertically integrated. Something that they, they don't even talk about during my trip to there, during my vlog, Michael even asked me like, Hey, just don't post a lot of our manufacturing one from a compliance standpoint. He doesn't want his guy calling him saying, I put some stuff out there that just what could be misinterpreted or seen wrong, but they're vertically integrated. They have their proper overages. Something that we talk about behind the scenes that isn't sexy to talk about is that their products are probably the top three most consistent products out there um, that are, are, always properly dosed, always delivered on the feeling. Every single serving is exactly the same. Uh, they have a community, like they've been able to grow a community there and a following that maybe a lot of it is intra-industry interest from brands that see that they're doing things that they wish they could do, whatever. They do awesome stuff there. <laughs> and then uh, they also drove home some incredible new product categories, things like Serenity were incredible. They challenged the industry with their, their super greens, uh, with the mushroom blends. It is some incredible new products that everyone seems to be loving. Their sleep aid, I've, I, I, I'm the token sleep guy here. I love sleep, but like that sleep aid like challenges every sleep aid I've ever taken in terms of just how incredibly well it knocks me out and recovers me for the next day. And it seems like every single product they put together has this little hidden Easter egg in it on how it works, which it really takes a little bit of extra effort to find, or you just got to go watch Joey's 35 minute breakdown of every single ingredient. But the attention to detail at every single stage, and lastly, their packaging, like mm -hmm. in an industry where we thought the packaging was going to be the same forever. It's like all hyper masculine bullshit, like whatever, like, they challenged all of it and they came out with some stuff that there's some nostalgia in there. There's some just exciting imagery. There's just some feel good stuff. Every single little thing is, is just fun on its own. You know, it, it's just, it's just fun to look at these products. It's fun to be involved in it. There's like, while I love every other brand in this list and I'm super excited for each one of them, it is hard to give it to anyone but Glaxon on here. They are absolutely the brand that broke out the most that excited us the most and had us talking pretty much every single day this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. I think Glaxon did some really cool things this year. Um, and I'm really excited to see what 2021 brings. Cause like you said, they didn't even want to create a pre-workout. I think consumers are going to start demanding products from them. Like, Hey, get a, give us a good gut health supplement. Give us a good joint health supplement. Like we already get DMS uh, all the time. Is Glaxon yeah. going to make this? Is Glaxon going to make a protein? And I know they said before, oh, we're never making a protein, but they'll figure it out. Like it just, um, and I'm excited to see their formulas. Cause like you said, you look at a, a formula that guys created. I have to ask Joey, like if I'm running a blog, I'm like, Hey, what's this for? Because I know it's there for a reason. Um, and I know there's maybe a hidden purpose that I don't know. So I think it's cool just to like have that yeah. side of it where Joey's the education guy. And if you really want to go to him, like he's very open, transparent to letting you know what's up. And I really appreciate that from a consumer standpoint. Cool. Well, I think it's, it's pretty set. It's pretty easy. We can say here, 2020 breakout brand of the year happily wants to give it over and congratulate uh, Glaxon. Uh, they did an incredible job entering into the space after being veterans of different industries of the space that came together and created a brand that uh, excited all of us and made us remember kind of why we got into this. So couldn't be more happy with how it worked out. Um, and we're excited to see, let's see, maybe next year if they can uh, take that not be their novice anymore and make a run for actual brand of the year. <laughs> they can do it. I think, I think they're, I think they're going to make a good run for the money for brand of the year. Someone's going to stop ghost. So uh, let's, let's see if Mike Bischoff and Joey Savage over there can do it. 
<laughs> well, I know that's like the brand Ghost is watching. I mean, Dan, Dan has said before, like, hey, I try out the product all the time. Like, he, he was taking Slice, I think, their fat burner, mm -hmm. or no, it was Thermal, because he wanted thermal. to see how the Mito Burn was, and he's, he tries out different products from them just to see how they go, because like you said, people look at their products and they think, no way is it that good, or no way is it this or that. And it's like, just try it and find yeah, out, you know? Just try it. Cool. Awesome. Well, congrats, Glaxon. Uh, we're going to have a few more videos coming out. We've got a long day of recording today. So if you're, if you're watching this, check it out. There's going to be some more coming. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're on the audio feed, let's just wait a couple seconds and you hear the next one coming soon.